Hi and welcome back. Today we'll paint a, a landscape painting, um, sort of just straightforward trees, foreground, sky. I'm wetting the paper all over and oh dear, look, sorry, got a little bit of paint from my painting board has come in, but that doesn't matter too much. Right, raw sienna, um, a weak mix and some ultramarine blue and it's just brought down with a tiny bit of, or dulled with a tiny bit of Payne's Grey. Um, don't worry if you can't get exactly this sky. These tutorials are more to give you a rough idea of a method rather than something to completely um, try and imitate. Um, I'm sure I couldn't even try, try to imitate my own painting if I tried to do it again. It's just to give you the rough idea of how to do things so that then when you paint a sky you can spot the problems, you can spot the opportunities and seize them with the brush so to speak. Right now for the foreground, um, same again, don't worry about imitating me completely. Uh, raw sienna, I'm just going to echo the colour of the sky a bit on the ground. And now some raw umber, just for a change, I think it's quite a nice sort of um, sandy brown. I often like to just tidy up the horizon line a little bit so I can sort of see more clearly what I want to do next. Now a little bit of Payne's Grey added. And you can see on the left all the little marks that I've made look quite random, but they should come together in the end. Now with a dryish brush and a medium amount of, sorry, a medium thickness of paint, it's Payne's Grey raw umber, there's a little bit of um, the burnt sienna in there. I'm just going to use the Haki brush to lift up um, tree shapes, distant tree shapes in the background. These can be fairly rough and ready. Uh, they usually end up looking like trees, especially if you use a clean damp brush and run it along the bottom like I did just there. We want a few more on the other side and just to keep it looking balanced, I'm going to put those a little bit further back so make them paler. Right, just add a little bit more paint over on this side, um, say medium thickness paint, dryish brush. You sort of see the amount of paint that I've got on my brush there. Right, just push a little bit of a sort of a bit of Payne's grey in with the um, umber and um, the raw umber and just put a little bit more something in nothing. Remember this is rough ground, rough patchy ground. Now I'm going to use the corner of the card to scrape in some impressions of tree trunks. Um, you can see where the paint is thickest that it's leaving a white mark, where it's a little bit wetter it's leaving a black mark but I'm quite happy with that because it means there'll be less rigour work for me to do a bit later um, to add more trees or branches in there. Now let's take a a closer look at the sort of marks that we've made. Remember when you're doing your foregrounds don't worry too much about copying what I do just try and do something similar but allow the paint to flow and don't try and force it too much. If you know what I mean try and see the opportunities where you've got something that loosely looks like it. Now can you see I've where I've cut the card um, I've got quite a sharp corner and a rounded corner for these distant trees. You can see I'm using the sharp corner because it's giving me a much finer line and again that helps push the trees back into the distance. <clears throat> now I'm using perylene green. Um, you can use any dark mossy green and I'm just going to sweep it across just to give the impression of grasses in the foreground and plants and things amongst all that um, rusty brown detail that we created earlier. 
it might seem a bit of a back to front way of doing it and it probably is but you don't have to do that remember you can use any colors that you want in any order you want to create any season um, that you want um, the idea is that this method should hopefully show you how to really loosen up and not paint detail but to paint um, an impression of what you see I just dabbed the top edge out a little bit with a tissue and now I'm getting some very thick perylene green and a bit of Payne's grey onto the tips of the hucky brush and I'm just creating very strong um, dark tufts of grass if you know what I mean they sit across the edge of where I put the perylene green wash in and I think look quite effective and just make some little marks strengthen things up and it's just tweaking it now and you can see close up the effects that we've got we could have rocks tufts um, undergrowth it could be little streams or slightly flooded areas there it's up to the viewer to decide what they see really but of course if you want to be a bit more definite with detail and um, plants and trees or shrubs then please just just go for it and that's the thing about painting it's whatever people want to do Right, I'm just using quite a fine rigger. I think it's a size zero or a size one. And I'm just going to put in a few more tree marks along that left hand row of trees, uh, just to strengthen up the tree line a little tiny bit and darken some areas. The amount of trees that you put in, again, will depend on how, how your marks have come out, your tree marks, and how the scraping happened. If you didn't scrape much or at all, you might need to put in a few more um, trunks and branches. That looks about right, I think. Right, I'm just going to add um, a few more grasses just to this right side here and use the side of the rigger with burnt sienna just to add a couple of little pops of red um, ac red accents, colour accents because I think it just makes the foreground come together and zing a little bit more if you know what I mean Right, we're nearly finished now. I've just got some quite weak, the painting's dry by the way, the sky's completely dry, some fairly weak perylene green and just using the corner, as you can see, the corner of the hacky brush, the sort of triangular or pyramid shaped tip and you can see the kind of marks that I'm making over those branches because this isn't a winter scene so uh, we need some foliage but I want it just to be the loose impression of foliage as those trees are quite far back I don't want them to be too dark so as I say this has been quite a, a weak mix of the green and you can see that looks quite effective like distant canopies there's some bits of dry brush marking there and things like that it's sort of hit and miss really with the paintbrush so that you don't block in the whole canopies. And here's the finished painting. Well I hope you like that. I quite quite enjoyed doing a sort of sunny day like this, a sort of maybe early spring painting. Um, well I hope you'll give it a try. Ask any questions in the comments below and please let me know how you get on and I'd love to see your paintings on the community Facebook page. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.